Good evening and welcome to the, the Scarborough School Board of Education business meeting. The date is Thursday, March 17th, 2022. May we have the attendance, please? Sure. Mrs. Giftis? Here. Ms. Casalonis? Uh, she's excused. Mr. Kelleher? Here. Ms. Leong? Here. Mrs. Lindstrom? Here. Mr. Peeney Huff? Here. Mrs. Turner? Here. Ms. Bertulia? Here. And Ms. Giftis? Here. Thank you. Can everybody please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Okay. Um, before we move on to the next item, um, I just wanted to uh, uh, recognize a moment of silence for um, one of our students, Wentworth lost a student and a friend last week. Um, and it's somebody who, who really has touched many hearts in Scarborough. So I just ask um, everybody here to please join me in recognizing a moment of silence to honor Charlie Copeland. Thank you. All right. Um, agenda item 4.0 or adjustments to the agenda. Are there any adjustments? Uh, no adjustments this evening. Okay, thank you. Um, agenda item 5.0 are public comments on the agenda item. Is there anybody here wishing to make public comment either in person or um, on Zoom? If you are on Zoom and you're interested in making public comment, if you could just raise your um, little hand, that uh, the little yellow hand to indicate you're interested. All right, seeing no, seeing no hands raised, I will go ahead and close public comment. Um, agenda item 6.0 is a DEI committee update. I'll turn this over to you, Alicia. Okay, um, thank you. So um, I did send out uh, an email to uh, past members of the DEI committee to um, see if there was continued interest in serving on the DEI committee. There was continued interest in that. Um, uh, expressed from many of the committee members. John and I um, had the opportunity to talk and the recommendation is that we um, choose committee members um, with John, myself as, as the board um, liaisons to, the, to that committee as well with ja as um, in, in, um, in conjunction with Jeff, I guess. The three options that we identified for picking people are potentially are randomly, um, uh, sort of in an open form forum um, with the full board or just select a few few members to choose. And we thought that random didn't make a lot of sense because um, the purpose of the, com the committee itself is to serve um, a diverse population and, and it makes sense to try to get um, some membership that would align with, with those goals. And, um, we thought that it might be a little uncomfortable to have those discussions in a public um, forum where we're talking about people who may be um, part of, of sort of protected classes or, or may not wanna have those discussions in public. So we thought that that would be the best way to handle that. And um, then um, I sent, I've drafted a um, sort of a, like a survey to, for people to, to complete if they wanna, um, try to apply to become a member and we're hoping to get that sent out and um, choose membership and begin the work as soon as we can, I guess. Thank you, Alicia. Are there any questions? How many seats have to have new, new members selected? I didn't do that number. And I guess that was one of the things that, that um, I thought we should talk about was if we wanted to keep it at what we had last year and then and then fill from there, or if we wanted to change the um, the membership. Um, I know that there was a, a question about how we were gonna conduct uh, the application process for students. And that was kind of a thing last time. Um, 
because that feels a, a little, uh, there was a high student interest in it. It didn't feel really necessarily good to exclude students from, from the conversation because, you know, it's for their benefit. Uh, however, it, it's pretty difficult um, to have, as you know, have a committee with, with excessive number of, of people. So I think that's something that we should probably um, define as well. How many people are on the committee right now? Or how many people would make a full membership now? Do you remember how many we had last year, Shannon? So that was a large, a large group. And we're going to be meeting in person now. So I think that will be good. And um, we've asked people to make a commitment to attend in person this, this go round. Um, just to provide a little bit more, uh, it's two board members, two members of administration, five teachers, seven community members or parents and six students. Is it primarily student seats that we need to refill? Um, we need to fill both. We need to fill community members um, and staff members and okay. um, yeah, and yes. students. So you, you have had some community members say that they um, are unable to continue serving? Well, we've, we've lost some um, sort of th through attrition as well. So. Gotcha. Are there so, oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I don't know if anybody has any preferences on how we handle that. If, you, if we're just want to, um, if you're okay with that recommendation. So I don't think, um, you know, it's not up for vote, but if, if it, at, until later, but um, if you have any other questions, I guess I can answer now or. Um, I have I have one if we're good. Uh, is your is the recommendation of the you and John to keep the committee size the same as well? So keep the committee size the same and fill the positions with you, John and Jeff. We didn't you you we didn't have a recommendation. We didn't that. discuss that as far okay. as a recommendation. I mean, that's something that um, I was hoping we were going to get to in the workshop, um, mm -hmm. but. I think my only other question is probably more for you mm -hmm. um, because we've sort of inconsistently had methods of choosing committees. Is this mm -hmm. like something that we will have the option to do going forward? Like, is this what we're thinking is the best way to populate our committees? Yeah, so that would be, um, that's my, my goal here is that we kind of are setting the standard for how we're going to select committees yeah. going forward, yeah. right? Um, I think, my personal thought is probably on any committee when you're selecting members, it might be a little, feel a little awkward, right? To sit up here in public and throw names out there, right? Like that just doesn't really feel good. I, I don't think um, all around. So I'm hoping with this, this is our first foray as this board into this. And I'm hoping we're kind of setting the standard for that going forward. But we're talking ad hoc, right? Committees. Yes. And, and just uh, just for clarification, we do have a policy for the form formation and, mm -hmm. and selection of committee members for standing committees. So. so is there any um, questions about the committee members? Any any thoughts on that? On, on the, the number of positions that that the um, the committee has? I mean, I guess my my preference would be for it to remain the same. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't I didn't see a reason for it to change. I don't know how you felt, Shannon. I mean, as a or or Diane as an individual that's sat on that committee. Go ahead. Yeah, I think it was a good working number, and I think you'll also have a different experience with it being in person mm -hmm. this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So hopefully that will make 
you know, those conversations um, more fluid because everyone won't just be on their screen. Right. Yeah, I agree. I think that the size worked well and it was a good working group, right? And it felt, um, it felt good. The only thing I'm thinking in the back of my mind is last year we had, like I said, six students and that was us. If you remember, we went back and took everybody um, that applied to be on the committee. We allowed all of the students to serve. So my only thought would be, what if we don't get six student applications? But I mean, I, I don't know that we go then ask for more people, right? Like, I think we just keep it at- Well, what if the number. flip side is, what if you get 10 applicants this time, are you going to take them all? And then the committee is, is even larger. Um, I would say, I mean, I'm gonna, I'll leave it to your recommendations or to everybody's thoughts really, but um, I think then you're almost getting too big, right? Like you're talking, what is that? What did I say, 26 or 22? So if we had six more, you're, you're creeping up close to 30, right? And then that almost becomes unproductive and that we don't want that either. I agree. Um, yeah. And I just, I wonder how, how are you going to be selecting um, from the pool on making sure that everyone has some sort of representation then? Um, that's like that's the difficulty. I mean, it's really, um, I imagine that we'll probably have a consultation with our attorneys to, to discuss that because it is um, complex. You know, you want to try to have membership from many, you know, diverse groups and you can't really solicit that information. And um, the best that we can do really, I think is to ask what we are, are asking, which is, you know, what skills and qualifications do you have or, or you know, to bring to the group and, um, and attempt to make the best selection we can from there. But um, we can't ask people to, to sort of self-identify. And um, so my preference in terms of the, um, the discussion that we had about whether it should be televised or open to the public or what um, I guess would be for us to sort of have a, um, a discussion about that when it's time to put forward a motion. Um, we don't have a recommendation on that. And um, I mean, I thought that Michelle Shipp had a good um, suggestion about having a reporting member and um, but um, I think we were split on that enough that we should have that discussion and, and um, when, it, when it comes time for the action item. So I'm happy to offer for, forward a motion when it comes time, but I don't know that it's necessarily gonna be a recommendation. I almost wonder if that's an option for um, discussion and motion once you've got the committee formed, yeah. you know? Yeah, maybe we could do that. And then we do it then. Does that, does I, that seem? I, I do think we should do it as a, as a motion though, because it was, you know, mm -hmm. something that's a board approved um, function of the committee because that was, I mean, it is so significant for, for public opinion and it was something that was sort of a, um, sticking point for, for our group because um, we heard that people felt that they weren't able to give enough or sufficient information, so. On um, your, on um, the application that you guys made, would you be able to add maybe a section like what, what method would you prefer when we have, when we conduct our meetings? Um, yeah. I think that's a good, I, I, I think that's a good idea. I just think, um, and I'm happy to do that. I, um, but I know that preference is not going to be enough to sort of, um, overcome the concern that, that of, about sort of public access to that information of some form. So. Yeah. I, I also just wouldn't want to scare anyone away. I agree. If, yeah. If, you know, we decide that we're 
if we agree that it should be recorded or whatnot, mm -hmm. and then now all of a sudden you're losing all your participants or whatever. So that's why yeah. it'd be nice to just ask who's whoever is applying and interested what, what they what they, they want. Come. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So if I um, and I'm going, I, I I, I will say, I think I'm going straight, I am going straight off memory, but I believe this to be right. I think we have um, th three student positions to fill that I know of. Um, and I, I want to say um, three staff positions is my, my recollection. So that would be six right there without the community members that we would need to refill. Any other questions for Alicia right now? Okay, good. All right. All right, agenda item 7.0 is new business. Agenda item 7.1 is the first reading of the proposed um, FY23 school budget. So I'll turn this over to Jeff. All right, thank you. Um, I just wanted to start off with a round of thank yous. I, I, I you know, really wanted to thank um, our staff you know, our central office leadership team and our leadership council, uh, as well as, as the board for, you know, we've, we've had the opportunity now uh, Monday this week, Monday evening, and then most of the morning on Tuesday as well um, to have our leadership council and central office teams, as well as nutrition, adult education, um, facilities and maintenance. So, you know, all, all of our, our different departments as well as schools uh, really kind of go through um, our proposed budget um, for FY23. And, and um, I have to say this being my first Scarborough budget cycle, I'm, I've just been really impressed, so impressed just with um, the thought, thoughtfulness, uh, the student-centered approach um, to the use of resources. This is a really unique, year in a lot of ways. Um, and I think that also applies to thinking about uh, how we budget uh, and resource to meet the needs of our students um, coming out of, you know, half a year of fully remote instruction into a hybrid year of combination of learning at home and learning at school and, and all of the different health and safety protocols. Um, also from a resource point of view, having uh, a whole lot of significant investment from the federal government and now all of a lot of those funding essentially ending and then trying to figure out um, you know how to manage that really how to how to manage resources in a way um, that at the at the end of the day um, seeing our students through a period of time where they've been educated in ways that we've never educated before right and so this year is, has felt really unique in a lot of ways. Um, but I've just been really impressed with everyone um, listening, asking questions, offering their feedback and thoughts and putting this budget together. So we've had that opportunity to go through listening sessions at each individual school, to have our building leaders really dig into their own budgets um, line by line, and, and also to think outside of the box like we've been doing for two years straight now and, and how to best uh, support our learners all the way through K to 12. So um, I really feel like what we went through and what we've been able to present uh, is, is super thoughtful um, and wanted uh, our resident budget guru Kate Bolton, <laughs> who's with us this evening and feeling sharp as a tack. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm still waiting for the the T-shirt the Jeff's going to have made for me. <laughs> right. I haven't quite figured out what the tagline is going to be yet. So once I have that. He's working out. on it. He's he's trying out a few, <laughs> a few names for me. Um, just to go through like a couple of a, a couple of highlights, you know, um, uh, prior to a motion for the first reading. So I'll turn it over to Kate. Yeah, so good evening. I feel like I've seen a little bit of you guys this week. Um, for the benefit of the public, we spent, I think, five hours, five and a half hours or so this week already um, in two budget workshops going through, as Jeff said, department by department, school by school, 
um, and giving the school board an opportunity to get together with the leadership team and, and do a little bit of a deep dive into what our budget proposal looks like and, and the whys and the wherefores of that. Um, so tonight's action is the first reading of the FY23 school budget by the school board. And this is the moment when the leadership council's proposal is handed off to the board and becomes the board's baby and um, kicks off the public process um, of budget development. So at this point, we're, we're saying, you know, here's what we've got to offer. We hope you guys love it and we hope you take it forward and do your own work on it. Um, so this will be the first step in that process. Um, after the school board votes this evening, we have a couple of weeks to get acclimated and, and ask questions and um, work on what we call items in motion and adjustments that may be coming along the way. Uh, the combined town and school budget, um, the town manager and Jeff will present that on March 30th, which is a Wednesday night town council meeting. And that's when we get to see the entire municipal budget. The school department is only a department of the town, um, although we are a, a little bit of the tail that wags the dog in terms of our numbers. Um, but the, the full budget will be out to the public at the end of this month. Um, I did mention in the slide that the town council has set a goal of no more than a 3% increase on the property tax rate, which is um, now going into four or five years of that same target. Um, I would say four or five successful years of that target because we have come in under 3% um, with the exception of one year uh, in 2015, I believe it was, um, right along. So uh, it's, it's achievable. And um, the budget that we've got before you this evening is similar to budgets we've had in years past in terms of the numbers and in terms of our anticipated impact um, on the task tax ask of the town and therefore on the tax rate. Um, I did mention items in motion. Um, there are a lot of things that happened between March 17th and um, well, let's say May 17th, I think it is. May 18th is our second reading, the school board second reading um, and on up to the referendum. So we'll be working. We're not putting a budget out there and, and saying, here you go, we're all done. We'll be working with the town council. We'll be working with our leadership team and with the board to make adjustments and refinements before second reading. And um, our school board finance committee and our school board communications committee will be tasked with getting the information on that out to the public. And I'll talk a little more about that in a minute. So this slide talks about the process and it, it's already been for us kind of a long process. Um, starting in December, uh, our teams start to get together and talk about um, budget priorities. And I sit in a dark corner and start creating spreadsheets of salary and benefit projections and, and doing fancy math. Um, in January, we start to engage the staff. Um, we're doing some deep analysis of enrollment, personnel needs. And we start going through individual line items. There's almost 700 individual line items in our operating budget, and that's just the K-12 budget. So we sit down with each building leader and each department and go through line by line, um, looking for savings, changes, um, new investments needed. The level services budget is what we call the budget that we need to do the, the programs and services that we're providing today but to do them in the new year. Um, so that's a, a great investment of time. February and March, Colt and Leadership Council are looking at um, new proposals. What are we taking out? What are we putting in? We're setting our goals. We're finishing the budget book. And uh, we have reported out to the School Board Finance Committee a couple of times about how that process looks. And that all led up to this week where we rolled everything out and now we're sharing it tonight. So the budget presentation, um, our, um, our best advertisement, I guess you would say, is what we call the budget book. And um, 
There's a few binders floating around. I'm always happy to see binders. But our budget book is available digitally. Um, I've got a link at the end of this presentation. I spent some time with our webmaster yesterday and had a lot of fun learning how to post things on the new website. Um, so we're going to have a lot of material out there. We've got access now, which is great. It's something I was looking forward to. The budget book is a great way for the public to get involved and to learn about what school resources are asked for and why. Um, the superintendent's introduction and the executive summary takes you through about 10, 15 pages. It's a quick and easy read, and um, it's well worth it for anybody who's interested in knowing what we're, um, what we're asking for and uh, what we're, um, why we're reaching into the pockets of the taxpayers of Scarborough, let's put it that way. Um, there's a lot of information in that, in that book, and we'll also be posting lots of information in smaller bites and chunks for folks. Um, next steps, as I said earlier, items in motion will be updated. Items in motion is a funny phrase, but it means things like we don't have our health insurance rates yet, for example. Um, I just spoke with our property and casualty and liability insurance representative yesterday, and she's getting me some more refined numbers. So there are lots of little things that come due in the spring that can make a big impact on our bottom line. Uh, the town council finance committee will be making a review of the whole town budget and we'll be attending a meeting with them specifically for the school department um, and well i guess next steps is right now the first reading is still on the slide this is a snapshot of the budget proposal that we're putting before the school board tonight, um, you'll see the column of the FY22 approved budget, the FY23 proposed budget, the dollar change and the percent change. General fund is the K-12 operating budget that the voters of Scarborough weigh in on at the referendum. We also have the adult education budget and the school nutrition budget, which are not voted on, but which have an impact on the bottom line. So what you see here is the total education budget. Non-tax revenues are just what that says. Um, the, the bulk of that is made up of school subsidy that comes from the state of Maine and fund balance, which we're using from the prior year. Um, and then there's some other ancillary revenues that are available in detail in the budget book. And the bottom line is the tax request, which is what we're um, going to present to the town finance office. And they're gonna fold that into the cost of the overall budget proposal that will be presented to the town council. So it's important to remember that we don't just take this year's budget and add 6% to it. Um, as I said earlier, we go line by line. We look for places where we can save and change and find efficiencies. And so this slide talks about some of the places where the leadership team went through and combed out some of the, uh, the dollars that were budgeted, budgeted in FY22 that will not necessarily be needed in FY23. So first step is to take the number down a little bit before we start talking about adding to it. This slide talks about proposed added funding. And as most of you heard in the workshops on Monday and Tuesday, we do have some new positions and increased positions um, and one new activity program that I'm personally really excited about. Um, that we're proposing to add to the budget. Um, as I described earlier this week, there's a very complex new proposals process, which um, allows the leadership team, each member of the leadership team to bring a proposal to the table, to the entire group, um, to make what you might call an elevator pitch, talk about the needs that they have and the new resources that they would like to have. And then we go through several K-12 prioritization processes to come to a decision as a group on what are the most important of those things, um, knowing that we really wouldn't have the dollars available to do all of them. Um, and, and you also heard, I think, fairly loud and clear that the things that were not brought forward this year may be back on your table again in years to come. This slide talks about 
the federal COVID grant monies that are that are left for FY23. And as Jeff said earlier, um, we have had just an enormous amount of federal money flowing through the district in the last 18 months. And um, that's been wonderful. It's been terrific. There's a section in the budget book, surprise, um, about federal grants and what we've received and what, it, what they've been used for. There's a nice little chart in there that you can look at. Um, but in FY23, we've got a little bit left. It's going to amount to somewhere between 300 and 400,000, depending on exactly what we spend in the current year, um, because we'll be permitted to carry over any leftovers. So in the FY23 budget, not in the operating budget, not asking for tax dollars, we are proposing several positions and programs that will be funded by the remainder of the ESSER 3 grant is the, the one that we're gonna be using. And this slide gives you a breakdown of four funds. I mentioned general fund, K-12 operating, school nutrition and adult education. And the, the fourth fund is capital improvements. And we don't talk about capital improvements in terms of the tax ask just yet, because the school department doesn't decide the funding sources for capital projects. That goes through the town finance office. And I work with the town finance director and the town manager to decide um, what makes sense to be bonded or what makes sense to be appropriated, meaning uh, collecting taxes. Um, and this year we'll also have the interesting development of having a little bit of a capital reserve fund because um, you may remember that we set aside $488,000 of FY22 money, additional subsidy that we received um, to go to capital reserve. So we would have the opportunity to use a little of that as well if we'd like. So this is the picture of the first reading of the school budget has a lot of fancy numbers in it. And I'm going to hand it off to Jenna because I think she's going to read all those fancy numbers and make a motion. Yes. Um, so I motion to approve the first reading of FY23 school budget as follows. And I'm gonna read off four of them. So bear with me here. Um, move approval to adopt the leadership council's budget proposal as presented for first reading. Total general fund operating budget is proposed at $59,134,823 with offsetting non-tax revenues of $6,851,528. And, and a tax request to the town of $52,283,295. Uh, move approval to adopt the adult education budget as presented for first reading. Total adult education budget is proposed at $184,370 with offsetting non-tax revenues of $104,370 and a tax request to the town of $80,000. Move approval to adopt the school nutrition budget as presented for first reading. Total school nutrition budget is proposed at $2,041,000 um, with offsetting non-tax revenues of $2,041,000 uh, and no tax request to the town. Uh, and move approval to adopt the capital improvements budget as presented for first reading. Capital equipment proposed budget is $979,783 and capital projects proposed budget is $1,333,500 for a total capital budget of $2,313,283. Wonderful job, Jenna. <laughs> Do you have a second? Second. All right. Is there any discussion? <coughs> any questions for Kate or Jenna? Just want to say thank you uh, for all of the work that you've done. And uh, you always present the information in such a cohesive manner. And it's really clear and concise and easy for, for us, easier for us to understand. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's really helpful. And um, you know, your graphics are great and, and really makes it easy for people to digest. And um, just want to remind everybody that this is, like Kate said, just the starting out point that there will be, you know, changes and, and um, a lot of work between now and um, where we wind up in the end. And um, I just hope that people are patient with that process and get involved, um, but um, are 
understand that, you know, our schools really are, are facing a lot of challenges right now with coming out of the pandemic and having learning loss and, and social emotional needs of the kids increased and um, change the change of, in our town and the structure of our town. And so um, we're expecting our schools to really pivot quickly and, and, and address that. And, and, you know, we need to make sure that we fund them so that we can do that. Thank you, Alicia. Is there any other? I'll just echo Alicia's thank you to Kate and to the full leadership council for all the time they took walking us through the budget. It's been really helpful to have that information. Thanks, Kristen. That, that's exactly what I was going to say. I get to stand up here and talk to you guys a lot, but uh, there's a big team behind me and a lot of work. So I really appreciate them. There's a couple of them sitting back here, still being supportive, even though it's late <laughs> and they're tired. So thank you. Yes. Um, I too will say thank you so much and thank you um, as well. It's been, it has been very um, eye-opening and very, it's been great to sit through the process. Um, I do want to ask one favor of you. If, can you go back to slide six? I just was wondering if just for the public's knowledge, if you can explain that that 5.31 tax request is, does not, um, is not the mill rate request. Would you that's, mind just doing that? Absolutely. That's, that's something I, I never mind repeating. Yeah. Um, so the tax request is the school's net budget, they call it, which is the bottom line of the school's budget. Um, the tax request of the schools is not the same thing as the tax rate or the tax increase, the tax rate increase. What happens is that the tax request for the school budget is put together with the municipal budget and the capital budget into a big spreadsheet. And we come up with a number of dollars that we need to fund um, the full municipal budget, um, the number of tax dollars that we need. Then another factor that goes into it is the valuation of the town. And so every year, the town assessor and the town manager come up with an idea of an estimated valuation increase for the town. So all of those factors go together to eventually come up with the increase uh, on the tax rate. And that's something that we'll have an estimate of when we get to March 30, but it's not the number that you see before you here. So thank you for asking that. Yes, thank you for that. All right, so I think we are ready. If there's another discussion, we're ready to call the vote. Okay, Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Mr. Kelleher? Yes. Ms. Leong? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Ms. Trapini Huff? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Ms. Bertulia? Yes. And Ms. Giftis? Yes. Very good, thank you. I think there might be one more slide with some dates on it. Oh yeah, there is. Yeah. Um, just so if folks are reviewing the, the slide deck for tonight, here's some of the big dates. And at the bottom of this, when it stops doing the fancy roll here, I've linked in um, the new and improved budget page of the website. Um, and I hope folks will go out and take a look at that. Right now, what's posted up there is the budget book, my favorite thing. Um, there's an appendix to the budget book with a bunch of lists and line item detail. There is a copy of the slide deck from our workshops on Monday and Tuesday. And there's a process calendar that has um, pretty much everything between now and, um, and the June referendum on it. Um, I do have a goal to keep adding to that space now that I know how to do it. And it's actually kind of fun. Um, my, the webmaster is listening to me going, oh, <laughs> don't give her too much power. Um, but uh, I have some other ideas. Some of the things we've talked about in finance, like for example, I think that's gonna be a great place to put up some of the detail about the federal grants that we've talked about where we can get it all into one place. Um, so it, it's gonna be, I think, a nice place for data collection, particularly about the schools. There is still a town school shared budget portal, um, which is still linked out on this page. And that's where you'll see the full municipal budget and a lot of supporting documents. Um, but I feel like this will give us an opportunity to, to really put up anything that we're interested in specifically on the school side. 
thank you all. Thank you so much, Kate. All right, agenda item 7.2 is the first reading of the 2022-2023 school calendar. Um, Alicia, can I turn this over to you to talk about uh, the recommendation of the policy committee? What's your recommendation? Well, we, <laughs> we're going to, um, I, I mean, I guess I can start it. We, we met again after our last meeting and what we decided to do is to bring forth the calendar as is, right, as on the rec from the recommendation from Leadership Council. So if you look at it, the, the dates, as you saw them at the last meeting are the, are the same, right? Um, as a reminder, the snow day, remote day option is not included in here. So that will be a later discussion. We, we will separate the two. So at this point, what, um, uh, what Leadership Council, what Jeff, uh, the calendar that they have put together include um, the days, the professional development days you see here, and then the two days at the beginning of the year for um, the two green days that you see there, that is the staff days. Um, this also does include that staggered start time that we discussed at the last meeting that is included in here. Um, if you recall, Kelly, um, Kelly Crosby, Bren, Kelly, um, and Ann spoke to us about the purpose of those and why they were impactful this year. So with that said, do we have a motion to approve the first reading of the 2022-2023 school calendar? So moved. Second. Perfect. Any discussion? Yeah, go ahead, Jillian. I, I really, what Kelly said really spoke to me. Um, you know, initially, it was hard for me to envision um, how that would all work out for families. I know that it is difficult, but it is really valuable for them to get that and get a whole other uh, unit in. Um, I think it's it ends up being way more valuable. So I do support that um, those days in there for them. Uh, yeah, that's it really. Thank you, Jillian. Uh, John, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I want to say exactly what uh, what Jillian just said because that really was uh, very powerful. And then what we heard uh, this week in the uh, in in the, the budget meetings with uh, talking about the uh, the prep days or the prep time for the teachers. I, I think if we could give them more, we we should. And uh, I, I'm I'm behind it a hundred percent. I just wanted to throw that out there. Perfect. Thank you, John. Any other discussion? Um, I'll close it out by saying I too found Kelly's presentation to be really um, impactful. Um, getting an entire extra unit out of the year for reading, especially when we're talking about learning loss and we're talking about the ramifications and the repercussions of COVID. I think it's. Um, entirely important that we add those, even though I, I, I do recognize, um, and I think we all recognize, right, the stress and the added, um, the added struggle it does have for some of our families, but I also can't ignore this very real um, impact that those added, that staggered time has, start, has added. Um, and then the professional development days, I think I said this last time, but I, I think it bears repeating. Um, I do think we ask a lot of our, our staff in the way of you know, we, we have, we as a board have goals, uh, Jeff has goals, you know, we, and so we ask a lot of, of our staff members and, but yet we don't, we haven't given them the time to kind of implement what we're asking them to do. So I do think that extra um, professional development day is very important too. All right. Any, any other comments? All right, I think we're ready to call the vote. Great. Is Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Mr. Kelleher? Yes. Ms. Leong? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Ms. Trapini Huff? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Ms. Bertulia? Yes. And Ms. Giftis? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Agenda item 7.3 is approval of the DEI committee recommendations. Do I have a motion to approve? 
Can I can I offer the recommendation in motion format? Yes, please. Um, I'd move for the formation of the DEI committee with the charges previously voted on by this board and consisting of 22 members, five teachers, two administrators, 77 community members slash parents, six students and two BOE representatives with the two BOE members and the superintendent selecting the members to fill the committee vacancies. Second. Perfect. Any discussion? All right, I think we're ready to call the roll, call the vote. Mrs. Giptis? Yes. Mr. Kelleher? Yes. Ms. Leong? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Ms. Trapini Huff? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Ms. Bertulia? Yes. And Ms. Giptis? Yes. All right. Um, I think what I would like to do is bundle um, 7.4 and 7.5 because they do, um, they do go together. Um, and it is the first reading of policy JKAA, use of physical restraint and seclusion, and the first reading of policy JKAAR, procedures on physical restraint and seclusion. So do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Perfect. Is there any discussion? Just say we, we address these in policy because of um, statutory changes and this was just to bring us up to date and, and um, pursuant to the recommendations of um, the attorneys at, after their you know interpretation of the law. And so this will get us where we need to be in terms of um, the, the physical restraint policy. All right, any other discussion? All right, I think we're ready to call it. Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Mr. Kelleher? Yes. Ms. Leong? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mr. Peeney Huff? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Ms. Bertulia? Yes. And Ms. Giftis? Yes. All right, thank you. Um, the next one is item is 7.6, the first reading of policy BEDH, public participation at board meetings. Um, and I did just want to spend a minute here and let you know that um, there are multiple policies that we have that speak to how the public participation in the meetings and those will also be forthcoming, but we did get this one ready. So we, we brought it forward um, for first reading separate from the others with the understanding that the others will be coming, will be coming soon. All right, so this is the policy that just speaks to um, public participation at our meetings, how they participate, um, how they um, make public comment, how they identify themselves, um, all of those updates. So is there any, is there any discussion or questions on that? Well, I think we need a motion, motion first. first. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought, I, I apologize. So do I have a motion to approve the first reading of policy BEDH, public participation at board meetings? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yes. I just have a small question and it might mean really nothing at all, but on D where it says identify themselves by their full legal name, mm -hmm. do we have to have legal in there? Can it just say by your full name? I guess I'm just wondering how nitpicky we're gonna get over like middle name, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Like, I think that, I, I mean, <laughs> from my person, you know, we had, we're always trying to pivot and adapt to change, our changing worlds, I think. And, mm -hmm. and, and you know, our, the discussion that we had in policy is that we want people to participate, but we also want people to participate appropriately. And um, we want to encourage participation. So we want it, um, people to, um, whether they're a resident of Scarborough or not, to be able to participate. Um, uh, you know, you're able to speak um, if it's an agenda item or not. And the the legal name, I think, is just an expectation that you're going to you're going to make yourself identifiable. And and I, my thought on that is not that in a, punitive in by any means, but I do think that there needs to be some form of accountability. And I in terms of there are rules and expectations and decorum and and um, and if we don't 
require people to identify themselves. That sort of, set, I think, sets the tone for maybe not, you know, allowing things to go um, a little bit more free flowing. And so my, my, I wasn't envisioning their, you know, middle name or anything, right. but that, that you're identifiable because you need to be responsible and accountable. Um, if, 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 you know, you said anything that, that um, is libelous or, or anything like that, you know, I think that, I think that we've seen in Zoom meetings and where people can remain anonymous, that things start to go a little bit at places where we don't want them to go in terms of um, conduct is starts to get really in a place where we don't want to restrict anybody's comments, right? But but we also want to make sure that we're not offending people. We're not pointing out individuals. We're not um, criticizing staff or, you know, think, and there are reasons for those rules. And, and I think in order to maintain some of that order, you've got to make sure that at the very least you, you, you have their name. We, we did agree to get rid of their street address just to try to provide for safety of people. And, 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 you know, again, not to try to infringe on anybody's ability to talk or to try to um, make them nervous to talk, but just a bare minimal um, identification if, if they're going to make, make a public statement. And I, and I think that that's pretty fair and reasonable. And, and um, town council does, I think town council requires full name and, and address, but um, and so that was the discussion that we had and, and, and why. Yeah. And I would just add on to that, um, just so you know, Kristen. Um, so not that I'm asking for people's driver's licenses as they come to the podium, right? Like that's not what we're going to do. But if you, the way that that's worded um, and the way that the draft came over to us is that I would actually ask them to identify themselves mm -hmm. and they give me their name. And then I recognize them to, to give public comment. So we would have um, that extra measure in, I guess, if that makes sense. I think it does. Yeah. It so, just sounds so official rather than yeah. just identify yourself or mm -hmm. give your first and last name. It's like your full legal name. <laughs> But we're actually re loosening the restrictions other than adding the word legal. But, I do you know, like but. the removal of the address. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good thing. Um, I, you know, I hadn't really thought about it until you just asked this question, but then we're also on the subject of DEI. And then, you know, if someone has a full legal name, but then prefers to be called by something else, I think then we're going to also going to run, run into an issue there. Um, and we don't want to overstep our boundaries there when, when someone feels like they should be called something else. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, now I, I don't like the, the legal word in there now that you bring it up. Yeah. Is that how it came over from the attorney? No, no. okay. No, no, it isn't. Um, that was a discussion that we had and um, and with the with the um, address discussion as well, and sort of what are the benefits of providing all of that information, and what are the downsides? And and you know that's a good point that I never mm -hmm. thought of. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my concern with that is that if that's not what you want to be um, known by, you should probably take the legal measures to change it. But be, I mean, because in order to identify somebody we need to have their their full legal name but I I'm not opposed to taking that word out if that's what people yeah um Jillian go, go ahead is there any so in the past people have had to provide their their address but um is there any reason why they shouldn't state whether they're a Scarborough resident or not is there like, a reason why they they should or shouldn't say that yeah, I mean, yeah. like, should they say Scarborough or? Um, well, we don't have that requirement, right? That they're a Scarborough resident. So, but are you saying maybe we should add it? Yeah, it might be yeah. helpful to know if yeah. they're a Scarborough resident yeah. or someone speaking from another town. It might affect how we process the comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, so what I'm hearing is that maybe we um, modify the full legal name to being the full name and maybe add an extra sentence in there about their connection to the district or to the community. Just town of residence. Yeah. Town of residence. Well, I mean, I, I guess that one of the thoughts that I, I have about whether you're a resident or not is um, so I guess what I envision you you sort of contemplating is okay, if somebody comes here and they say the budget's too high, for example, um, but they're not a Scarborough resident, then you may not think that it it's as meaningful uh, of a um, comment as you might if they were a Scarborough resident. However, if they were a parent of a, a child in Scarborough who's impacted by the funding and they don't, you know, and they don't live in Scarborough, then the relationship would be more relevant. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. To me, I don't know if it matters. I mean, I, okay. I sort of like, you know, I I, I, I I don't think we have a ton of people from outside of Scarborough. We have had people from outside of Scarborough that come and talk, but I'm I'm really interested in what everybody says. So I, I don't, that wouldn't sway me one way or the other, but, but it might for you. And if it does, then that's something we should definitely consider. Oh, that's a good point, Alicia. That is a good point. I also feel like a lot of the people that already like make public comment do a lot of times like, oh, I'm a parent, a kid, or I'm a mm. teacher. Like a lot of times they already do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true too. So it kind of comes out organically versus the forcing the issue. Mm-hmm. All right, so as a point of order, I just want to be sure if we pull out the word legal that I, I, I seem, I, I think I hear most of us are on board with pulling out the word legal. So just be full name. If we, we are to do that, um, we need to bring it back, make the edit and then come forward again. We don't need to, we don't need to amend it today. I mean, we, we can um, just revisit back at, at committee and then, and then bring it forward again, I think, um, for a second, for a second reading with the modifications, given the feedback that we've had. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we would have, still have our two approvals necessary. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your, thank you for your feedback. Okay. I think we're ready to call the vote. Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Miss, Mr. Kelleher? Yes. Miss Leong? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mr. Peeney Huff? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Miss Bertulia? Yes. And Miss Giftis? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, agenda item 7.7 .7 is appointments. 7.71 .7 are the middle school winter two coaches. Okay, so we have six coaches for the winter two coaches roster. Um, Steve Pelletier for eighth grade boys and girls track coach. Brian Clifford, seventh grade boys track coach. Heather Mazur, seventh grade girls track coach. Ben Watson, our wrestling coach. Morgan Royal, our swim coach. And Stacey Dan, assistant swim coach. Um, do you want to continue reading the rest of the point? I'll just call I would out. love to. Yeah, that would be great. So That's... we have um, just really quick agenda item 7.72 is the middle school theater choreographer, my goodness, and 7.73 is a high school strength and conditioning coach. Yes, yeah, so our uh, theater choreographer, Deb Lombardo, and our strength and conditioning coach, Patrick Malia. Perfect, thank you. Um, so I would like to bundle the um, appointments. So um, do I have a motion to approve the middle school winter two coaches, the middle school theater choreographer, and the high school strength and conditioning coach? So moved. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? All right, I think we're ready to call the vote. Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Mr. Kelleher? Yes. Ms. Leung? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mr. Peeney Huff? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. 
Ms. Bertulia? Yes. And Ms. Skiptis? Yes. Perfect, thank you. Um, before we would adjourn, I would be remiss if we um, we didn't recognize our um, one of our board members, Gabby, Gabby Giftos. Um, this has been a very exciting week for her. Um, she is, uh, for those that don't know, she was um, recognized this week. She will be the salutatorian for the senior class. So that is a really big and exciting detail. So congratulations. congratulations. That is such a high honor. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Agenda item 8.0 is adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All right. Any discussion? All right. Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Mr. Kelleher? Yes. Ms. Leong? <laughs> yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Ms. Trapini Huff? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Ms. Bertulia? Yes. And Ms. Giftis? Yes. All right. Have a good evening and happy St. Patrick's Day. Good night.